There's no doubt that Tom Smith, as a lifelong auto enthusiast, and really for the past 30 years, developed a collection that's regarded among one of the finest that we've ever seen. High level driver quality automobiles. They're maintained, they're taken care of, they've been preserved, and that sets this collection apart from so many others. When you attend a basketball game, you always find team mascots. Food Line has decided we need a mascot too, like a nice, friendly lion, to represent the extra low prices you always get when you shop at a Food Line store. So I've asked my wife Martha to audition lions to find one she feels will work well with me in these ACC commercials. Honey, have you found the perfect mascot? Martha, maybe we should let someone else audition the lions. My granddad was really a uh, one-of-a-kind person. I don't, I don't think there's any interview we could give that would fully encompass who he was. My granddad grew up in Salisbury in a house that had no indoor plumbing, started working fields when he was 10, 12 years old. Just a real salt-of-the-earth guy. Tom is one of those people who we've met before, a self-made business success who started at the lowest rung of the company that he worked at for many years and worked his way to the chief executive officer. Even with all his successes, he was just a normal guy at the end of the day and he didn't want you to look at him any differently than you would look at anyone else. There's no doubt that Tom Smith, as a lifelong auto enthusiast, decided with the success that he had in business, developed a collection that's regarded among one of the finest that we've ever seen. When he was young, Salisbury, young people drug town with their old cars. And there's not a lot of difference in his age and mine. He just liked the older cars. Corvettes, he's a Corvette person. 1954, it was a very important year for the Corvette. They did sell more of them. They offered more color combinations, which helped to give more life to the automobile. And the one in Tom Smith's collection, it is that classic polo white with the red interior color scheme and that now infamous six-cylinder engine. And the condition of the car is very well preserved. It's a car that, once again, somebody who buys this could probably drive it and not feel as if they're you know, uh, sullying a 100 point restoration. And that's really what I like about a lot of the cars in the collection, they're usable. A big year for Corvette, 1957, are considered by many to be the year that the Corvette really grew up. Now really under the care and custody, the main influencer of the Corvette, Zora Arcus Duntoff, really started to push the performance envelope, not only for street application, but also for the racetrack. And Tom's 1957 example is spot on. First year, 283, but the optional two four barrel equipped, 270 horsepower version of that great small block V8. It's a four speed manual transmission, great colors. Very important part of Corvette history and a really nice car too. Tom has what you might call the family tree, if you will, of C2 Corvettes, the 65, a 66, and a 67. All of the cars are just breathtaking when you think about what was happening back then. And the 1965 coupe that he has may be the car that a lot of people picture when you say mid-year C2 Corvettes, Nassau Blue, four-speed car. It's a small block car, but short of a big block, it's, it's a car that is gonna give you everything you want in that particular year Corvette. 1966 Corvette convertible. 350 horsepower, 327 with a four speed. That is known and regarded by many as to be one of the finest small block Chevy engines ever built. Very tractable and usable for street, but really got a nice pull, especially steering that four speed transmission. The dark blue metallic color is stunning and also very rarely seen, but the equipment level and the condition of the 66 is gonna draw a lot of buyers. Of all the C2 cars, the 67, may be the most desirable. Styling on the 67 is so smooth, it is so refined, and uh, I've always said that they could have stayed with that style another couple of years, but instead in 68, they went to the C3s. 1968, all new Corvette body, loosely nicknamed the Shark. Interesting that a lot of the components of the car, including the different powertrains, the braking system, the suspension, the frames, all of that stuff was a carryover from 67, essentially a new body. 
This particular version that Tom has, has the optional and top of the line street engine, 435 horsepower, 427 with a four speed, and again, a terrific color. That is Le Mans blue. The 1969 Corvette really was kind of like night and day compared to the 68. So many improvements between 68 and 69. A lot of the things that the 68 suffered from had been corrected. And this one, again, with that monster 427 in it that uh, just about any performance nut would want to have if they were going to buy themselves a Corvette and a four-speed, which of course was the preeminent transmission back in the muscle car era. So again, this is a, this is a Corvette that I think a lot of people, if they're going to own one Corvette, they would like a C3 with that powertrain. One of the more unusual and rare Corvettes in Tom's collection is his 1972 Corvette convertible with the LT1 that first debuted all the way back in 1970. Now powered down a bit, 255 was a rating in 1972, but it was the first and only year that you could get factory air conditioning. It was believed that only around 200 were built, all with four speeds, and the fact that it's a convertible on top of that makes this car very unusual and very desirable to those Corvette enthusiasts in the know. He had an appreciation for the older cars, Corvette specifically. One thing is he said, you like what you grew up seeing, and then eventually you reach a point in life where you can have those things, and that's where all this came from. When he was young, Salisbury, young people drug town with their old cars. I mean, not a lot of difference in his age and mine. And he came up in the 50s and the 60s, his first car was a 56 Chevrolet. I think one of the most eye-catching cars in Tom Smith's collection is the 1956 Chevy Bel Air for several reasons. First of all, it's one of the Tri-5 Chevys. The popularity of those cars has not diminished after all these years, especially when they're presented like his. Totally original, classic colors, classic powertrain, and a restoration on the car that really shines. Buick performance fans know the significance of their landmark signature engine, the 455, first debuted in 1970. But kind of lost to time is the fact that the top of the line performance full-size Buick in 1970 was the Wildcat in its final year and the only year you could get it with a 455 cubic inch engine. It's 370 horsepower and a mass of 510 pound-feet of torque. And Tom's example, unbelievable in the equipment level. It's got air conditioning, AM FM radio, eight track tape player, power windows, tilt steering column, all of those were options. It's impeccable condition and rarely seen. Well, it's clear that with a couple dozen cars in this collection, that there's a big priority on Corvettes. But like a lot of collectors, his interest levels span beyond that. And that includes a couple of really serious exotic cars from the 1980s and a couple of supercars from the 1990s. Tom's collection has two Vipers, a 1994 Roadster or convertible and a 1996 GTS Coupe. Now, the 94, I think, is special because of the low mileage, a little over 1,000 miles on that car. That's like buying a new Viper uh, here in 2024 that was built, you know, 30 years ago. The 96 GTS Coupe is a special car that was the first year for the Coupe. It also had a horsepower increase up to 450 horsepower. And the GTS Coupe is the highest appreciating Viper of all the ones that were ever built. It's the one that continues to gain value every year. The Lamborghini Countach once again just set the world on fire. It started with the styling of the car. And I'm not surprised that Tom chose this important car from the 1980s as one of the centerpieces for his collection. And I think that this car really showed that it wasn't all about bare bones performance, but it could also be about just wild styling. The mid-engine mounted V12 was rated 414 horsepower. Of course, it was a five-speed manual transmission. And the presentation and the condition of this car is literally, takes us all the way back to 1988. I'm not sure a nicer example could be found. 1989, Ferrari 328 GTS. That's Ferrari red, about 80% of all Ferraris built. It's a desirable target body style. It's got the saddle interior, screaming V8 mid-engine, gated five-speed manual transmission. But how about under 1,000 original miles? I'm not sure that in all the years of Mecham that we've ever seen a Ferrari of this vintage in such extreme 
original condition. And I'm expecting the true Ferrari connoisseurs to go crazy over this car. One thing about a collection that some people don't consider is the facility that the vehicles are stored in and what kind of maintenance they receive. Each and every one of these cars starts, runs, drives. So that shows you that the cars are protected, they are preserved, they're maintained. Uh, the buildings here are weather tight. Uh, the cars are not exposed to the elements. And just take a look at the automobiles and you can see that uh, their appearance and their condition has always been important to Tom and that has carried on now after his passing. Everything he had to stop not well kept. And uh, I just don't think it can get any better around here. I think what he did in here preserved it for someone beyond him to enjoy. You know, it's a shame we lost Tom last year at age 82, but his legacy is gonna live on forever. His sharp eye, his pocketbook, his ability to acquire these cars, to take care of these cars, is a benefit to all of us in the collector car world. He has literally saved these cars, some of the best examples of some of the most sought after collector cars in the world for another generation of enthusiasts. He was really a part of almost every facet of his community. He loved to share his passions and help people along the way with that. He was just a good person. You didn't forget him. I think the people that see the cars, bid on the cars, buy the cars, there'll be a little piece of him within that.